as we move east of Isabella, the islands become much older, and plants have had time now to break down some of the lava. In the early days of the life of a lava field, the lava field can only support a few types of pioneer plants. Cactus is one of those plants that can survive without a great deal of soil. On many islands where animals uh, eat the cactus, and they do for the water, uh, the cactus have grown quite tall in order to be able to get their uh, cactus uh, plant out of the danger of being eaten by the animals. The needles often point down to discourage animals from climbing up into the cactus, but some needles are soft and not pointed. In those cases, the cactus seems to be actually inviting visitors. The visitors that it's trying to attract apparently are pollinators, something the cactus can't live without. In any event, eventually the pioneers will create enough earth for more normal plants to start taking hold in the old lava fields. And those new plants will start breaking up the lava fields even more. Meanwhile, at the edges of the islands, mangrove swamps are taking hold. Uh, mangrove is important for a couple of different reasons, and the main one is because it's saltwater tolerant. It can live off of the ocean's water. And the result of that is that uh, it has a constant steady supply of nutrients. In addition, because the mangroves grow into the ocean, uh, they create a tangle of vegetation that is an ideal location for a large number of fishes and other animals to survive, especially when they're quite young and small. We're in the mangrove swamp looking for animals, specifically sea turtles. Uh, they like to come into these mangroves, especially at night, uh, to sleep, and we're expecting to see a uh, few of them. There's one now. Unlike the sea lions, the uh, sea turtles uh, don't come out and greet you and, and try to play. Uh, but the good news is that although they're not seeking you out, they're at least not avoiding people either. They don't seem to be terribly afraid of people. Sea turtles can get to be quite large, uh, sometimes weighing hundreds of pounds. These turtles are much smaller than that, and it's probably partly for that reason that they're seeking the protection of the mangroves. They may not be large enough to survive easily out in the open ocean at night. After all, sea turtles do sleep, and like mammals, they do have to breathe. These turtles are coming up for air every few minutes. Uh, it would be complicated uh, for sea turtles to be sitting on the ocean floor and uh, trying to come up for air every few minutes that way. And there are two reasons why that's not a problem. Uh, one is when the turtles go to sleep, uh, they can extend the amount of time that it uh, takes for them to come up for air, but they still have to come up for air periodically. The water here in the mangroves is especially shallow so they only have to come up a few feet in order to gulp down some air here. That makes this a very convenient place for them to stop over and take a nap. One of the common types of uh, sea turtles is the green sea turtle. Uh, it's not actually green in color, at least uh, when you look at it from the outside. You have to open it up in order to see the fat, in order to see the green. The green sea turtle uh, feeds on algae and the algae makes its fat green in color. And uh, seen as though they were good eating and people were familiar with uh, the turtle's fat, uh, that's exactly how they got their name. These days, of course, sea turtles are off the menu in the Galapagos. Okay. 
If we're quiet, we're hoping to see more and more sea turtles, and in fact, from time to time, they do appear. This sea turtle actually looks dead, but that's not the case. It's really only asleep. Well, it's time to go back on board the ship so that we can keep up with our schedule. We're going to an island now almost entirely dominated by birds. It's North Seymour. It's just north of Baltra. In fact, Baltra's alternate name is South Seymour. Now, this particular island is the reason why uh, we're going to the Galapagos when we did in May. And the reason is because it's courting time among the birds that are on these islands. This is the time of year when the currents tend to change their dominance. The colder currents become more dominant and the warmer currents become less dominant. And that means there's going to be more seafood. And these birds depend on seafood. This bird is called a blue-footed booby. It's easy to see why it's called blue-footed, but what about booby? Well, it turns out that this is an old word, an old Spanish word, that means something like clown. And this bird does clown around a great deal, especially during courting season. Its courting behavior is quite comical. But another thing to keep in mind is this bird has no fear of people. And so this bird was also very foolish in that it allowed people to get close to them and kill them. The blue-footed boobies make two different kinds of sounds. The male does a whistling sound and the female does a honking sound. Both of them will do a sort of dance that uh, shows off those blue feet because the blue feet indicates the health of the birds. That's the male's whistle. Notice that she honks and he spreads his wings and takes a pose which is called sky pointing. I believe she's standing on that rock because it makes her blue feet more obvious. And of course he's strutting his blue feet so that she can't possibly miss it. This basically says, I'm the bird for you. behavior is called bill fencing. Since this is the kind of behavior I came here to video, I'm going to be staying here just a little while longer than I would normally. We've got another male that's trying to horn in on the action. Well, that's certainly not going to be tolerated. Well, 
Well, it looks like that interloper has been seen off. Now it seems that the interloper is having absolutely no luck getting his own girl. Meanwhile, the pair of birds are doing some symbolic uh, nest building, gathering up uh, sticks and showing it to each other. Courtship goes on like this pretty much indefinitely. But of course, at some point, it does have to stop and the nest building has to begin. Now take a bow and we'll move on. Uh, the next bird that we're going to see, actually we saw quite a few of them, was a mockingbird. But this particular mockingbird was doing something unusual. Uh, if you look closely, you'll see that it's after something. The insect that it's after is a scorpion, and the bird is snipping off the stinger. <laughs> now that the stinger is gone, he's beating the scorpion into unconsciousness, and he's going to eat it. It's one for the mockingbird, zero for the scorpion. For the scorpion, this is the end. <laughs>